Hi, view and Nux lovers around the world. Welcome to my lightning talk, building a polite pop-up with Nux3. My name is Michael Hoffmann. I'm a senior front-end developer and freelancer from Munich, Germany. I'm all into Vue and I run a weekly Vue newsletter and I'm very active on Twitter. So make sure to subscribe to the newsletter and follow me on Twitter. But now let's get started. Let me first explain what is an impolite pop-up. Therefore, let's take a look at the right side of my presentation. This demo application should demonstrate a typical website nowadays. If we visit the page, we get some uh, advertisement shown at the top, which can be dismissed. Then we get some cookie and privacy banner. Okay, let's dismiss that as well. And then after that, we are asked to subscribe to a view newsletter. And that what is called an impolite pop-up. But what's the problem? The first problem is we have another annoying full page pop-up on the landing page. The second problem is the visitors haven't even engaged with the related content. So we are asking the visitor to subscribe to a view newsletter, but the visitor didn't even visit any view page at all. And the third problem is we are asking, uh, the visitors are asked over and over again e each time they visit the page. So if I reload the application, we can see that we are asked again over, over and over again. Okay, let's see how we can make it better. We can make it better by using a polite pop-up. But what is a polite pop-up? A, po a polite pop-up only appears if the visitors are using are, are visiting a page that contains view-related content, because the in this example, the newsletter targets view developers. Additionally, the visitor should be actively scrolling the page for at least six seconds or more. And they should be scrolling through 35% of the, of the page so that we know that the users are really interesting, interested in the content. Because the visitors will be more likely to sign up because they are asked after they decided they like, they like the content. So we are back in our demo application here. And by the way, this is a Next 3 application using the Next content module. And there I have one page to render some React content and one route to run, render some view content. As you can already see on the landing page, we don't get a uh, full page dialog about the view newsletter. If we visit the React page, we can also see there is no um, dialog. But if we go to the view page, we see this debug information about the polite pop-up. And here we can see that already our time spent on the page is tracked. So we are already more than six seconds on the page. If we now start scrolling, we can see that the scroll progress is tracked. And if I reach the predefined threshold, we get our polite pop-up. It is polite because it appears in a non-intrusive way and it first asks the visitor if he is interested in our content or not. Okay, it's coding time. Let's start by writing a view composable for our polite pop-up. In this example, we call it use polite pop-up and it contains a reactive variable called visible, which is per default false. Additionally, we have a trigger method, which we fill later. And of course, we need to return both inside our composable. Now let's start by implementing the interesting stuff. Let's uh, implement how we can track the time spent on a page. Therefore, we add another reactive variable to our composable, and it's called read time elapsed. We use the use timeout function composable from view use to trigger a timeout um, if we visit the page. We don't want to start the timeout immediately, but we want to start it using the start method returned from the use timeout function composable. After the timeout has elapsed, we update the read time elapsed uh, value and, se and set it to true. Of course, we need to configure our timeout. And in this example, we are using a six second timeout. Next step is um, we need to fill our trigger method. And if the trigger method is called, we reset the read time elapsed variable and set it to false, and we call the start method from the use timeout function. And basically, that's all to track the time spent on the page. 
The next interesting part is tracking the scroll progress. Therefore, let's create a computed property called amount scrolled in percentage. And now we need to do some calculations. First, we need to take the document scroll height. As you can see here, it's this blue rectangle. That's the whole document height, which, which you can access using document.documentElement.scroll height. The next part we need is the window height. And therefore, we use the use window size composable from view use, which returns the window height. And we, with these both information, we can calculate the track length of the scroll bar which should be this blue filled rectangle in the image. And by subtracting the window height from the document scroll height, we get the length of the track in pixel. Next step is we can now calculate the scrolled percentage, but therefore we need the scroll top value in pixel. And as you might guess, view use has a composable for that, and it's the use window scroll composable. And then we just need to take the scroll top value in pixel and divide it by the track length. And then we have the scroll progress in percentage. And of course, we can use math floor to round that value. So that's all for the calculation. Um, and yes, the, this value is stored in the amount scrolled in percentage composable. We create another computed property called scrolled content, which returns a Boolean. And in this Boolean, we check if the percentage is bigger or equal a predefined threshold, which is in our case 35. And at this point, we have all the information available to update the visible reactive variable. And we do it by using a view watcher function. In the watcher, we take the read time elapsed reactive variable and we watch the scrolled content computed property. If both values are true, we set the visible reactive variable to true. And this value can be used in any view component to show the polite pop-up. But let's add another important logic. We want to wait before the pop-up appears again. So it should not appear each time we reload the page but it should, um, for example, be only visible once per day. And therefore, let's define a TypeScript interface that contains a status, which is either unsubscribed if the visitor hasn't subscribed yet, or is subscribed if he has already subscribed. The scene count stores the total number of times the visitor has seen the polite pop-up, and the last scene ad contains a timestamp when he has last seen the pop-up. And of course, we use again a view use composable. This time it's the use local storage composable to create a reactive variable to read and write from local storage. And uh, we store exactly the interface that we just have defined. Last step is inside our watcher, each time the pop-up appears, we can increment the scene count value and update the last scene at timestamp. So, and the final step is inside the next catch all route for the content, we check if the route path is equal to view. And if that is the case, we trigger or we call the trigger method from our use polite pop-up composable that we just have created in the previous slides. Yeah, and at this point, we are done. We have implemented the main logic for our polite pop-up in Next 3. At this point, I want to say thanks to the amazing people behind Vue, Vue Use, Next 3, and SlideF. And SlideF is, by the way, the tool I use to create these slides. Um, yeah, this was just a lightning talk, and there is a lot more I could tell you about polite pop-ups. For more details, check, check out my corresponding blog post, which contains more details about this topic. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you, thank you. And we do have a few questions for you. I don't have the graphic for it, but the question we are asking everyone, what operating system, Linux, Windows, Mac, what I'm Team use? Mac. 
It's um, you, Mac. Back, we are yeah, back in the days I was a Windows user, uh, same as Eduardo for playing video games. But since okay. I started freelancing, I went all into macOS. It just works and I don't have time to spend updating Linux distributions and stuff like that. So yeah. Fair enough. Uh, Mac, Mac is, is winning on the poll so far. It's like 76%, 9% is Windows and 14% is uh, Linux. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I have Your a love for strong. Mac. But I'm... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So up next we have, how can we track and measure the effectiveness of the polite pop-up? Yeah. So what I have, I have a analytics software running on my website, which tracks how often the pop-up is shown and how often people are really clicking the, yes, I'm interested button. And uh, I checked the numbers before the talk about, for my page, it's about 20% of the people clicking on the link. And before I had the polite pop-up, it was, uh, yeah, it was worse that numbers. I, I don't know the exact numbers, but I used the impolite pop-up there and yeah, the, the engagement rate was really bad. Okay. That is good to know. And uh, what are some of the advantages to building your own pop-up in this manner, as opposed to using a third-party notification library? Uh, yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, Basically, the answer is there are a lot of um, existing solutions that offer polite pop-ups, but I just to love to create that stuff on my own, um, looking at that libraries, reverse engineering how it works and implementing on my own. Um, so basically, I just did it because I, I had fun and I like to write it on my own. I like it. I like it. And then what are are there any drawbacks or limitations to using next three for building the polite pop-up uh, not at all and what i also need to mention is this um logic that i showed is not related to next three at all also you can use any front-end framework and build it on your own but yeah i'm a view and next enthusiast so i used that technology okay and what are some of the best practices for creating a user-friendly, non-intrusive, polite pop-up? That's a good question. Um, I'm not aware of any best practices. I just um, looked at existing solutions in developer portfolios and uh, analyzed existing third-party libraries and rebuilt it based on that information. But yeah, if somebody knows best practices, some um links that you can share i'm i'm happy to read that i feel like that's definitely something that maybe one day you'll find with your analytics of some best practices <laughs> maybe, yeah. that that's definitely something that i found that we have content creation and helpful tips tricks talks is something that can be never ending and still so helpful and yeah. Now, uh, one last question that I had was like, how, I know you went through it a little bit on the talk, but like, how did you decide to do this? Like, what was like the final decision factor to do this yourself instead of using something else? Because I know some of the other pop-ups you can do like timing and that kind of thing, but like, what was that final decision or thought pattern to get you to do it yourself um yeah so it started as i um started to market my view newsletter on my portfolio website and the first implementation was a full page dialogue so each time the visitor visits the page i showed the full page dialogue and i personally got annoyed by it so i decided okay there need to be some better solutions and i looked at other um, developer websites and saw they are doing it this way and I liked it and that was the final decision okay I, I give it a try and the numbers show, uh, shows me that it, this was the correct decision perfect well thank you so much for your time today Michael we greatly appreciated it and we look forward to you continuing to contribute to the community and all your work thank you so much thank Michael you. thank you